for coming. Um, today we have our lab manager as the presenter of today's seminar. So Hassan is uh, one of our PhD students, and he is going to talk about the use of communication technologies during family time. So please join me welcoming Hassan. Um. Sorry, Hassan. Um, I know that Bernard wanted to tell something, announce something, uh, so maybe some of people would just go off when the seminar is. I'll just say I'm actually from participants for study, coming and singing, Bob probably just got back to the bar later on, so how do you check me a, um, a testing, I guess, an app and how people interact when they're arriving at a meeting. And how that might be facilitated. If you have meetings where participants come late or find it difficult to find the room, this is the right app for you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Turn out solving all your problems. Yes. And also, when John submitted his PhD last week, he didn't formally congratulate him. So, well done, John, on submitting your PhD. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and I uh, am Hassan Shahid Ferdos. I uh, would like to welcome you to my presentation regarding the use of communication technologies during family meal time. Uh, so in this talk, uh, I will discuss you about the study that I am currently doing on family meal times. So uh, when I scheduled this uh, presentation, I expected that the study would be finished by this time, but really it's not. Uh, uh, I am almost halfway through the study. But uh, I'd really like to share my findings and dis discuss with you about it. Okay? So my current supervisors are Dr. Hilary Davis, uh, Dr. Barnes, and Dr. Frank Petre. Okay. So at first, I would like to begin with the context of family meal time. Okay? So um, my, the research I am currently conducting is regarding the use of technology during family meal time. So, the terms family and technology are really important to us, also the mealtime. So let's discuss with what we mean by each of them. Okay? Uh, so when we say family uh, that share a household, we mean not only the nuclear family members like parents and children, but also the extended family members uh, and also the uh, friends that visit to that place, okay? um, consistent with the definitions used by O'Hara, Devold, and many others. The term meal time is not also well defined in current literature. So, generally, we may mean that uh, by meal time we only mean the activities of eating. Okay, but uh, that's not what I am interested in really. So, uh, by meal time, we I would like to address the issues relevant to uh, our eating practice. That is, the activities that immediately precedes or we do after our meal time. Okay. So when we instructed our, our participants, we wanted to investi investigate what they really do before they start their meal and what they really do after they have finished their meal too. Okay? So we will uh, consider the immediate activities preceding and subsiding the actual consumption of meal in our research. The communication technologies. So we are using a lot of communication technologies nowadays in our personal life and many of them has find their way into our family dinner time also. Okay. For example, we have found that commonly uh, the television, digital displays, uh, videos uh, like Skype, etc., email, social networking, all these are used during while we eat. Okay. So uh, these technologies can be classified in different ways. Some of the communications are unidirectional. For example, when we listen to a music or we watch a television, that's unidirectional communication. Some communications are bidirectional. For example, synchronous communications like Skype, where multiple parties are involved in uh, when they share their meals. Some communications are asynchronous, like if you, if you send an SMS or email, I would say that that's asynchronous communication. Some communications are group. Uh, they can be public, like sharing something in the social network or using a digital display in your, family, in your home. Okay. Okay. Now, as we have said something about family, meal time, and communication technology used around it. So what is this research all about? Okay. When we eat our meals, our family meal times, it's not really about eating, is it? So uh, it's not about the food only, but the environment that 
creates and the food, the communications, the context of the food is uh, what we say in commensality, that the shared experience of eating, which is our concern. Not the technology, but the impact of technology that it has on our commensality, on the shared experience of our eating. That's we are interested in about. So, let's discuss about some related words that focuses not only on food, but the interactions around food. Okay. So, many of the prior research works that took a approach that we call problem solving approach. Okay. They, are, they assume that there is some problem around our interactions with meal times, in meal times, and try to address, identify and address those issues. Many of them focused on the nutritional awareness aspect of meal times in regard to our, with relation to the social interactions around it. So I will discuss a few of them, and uh, uh, it's not a comprehensive literature review that I can present in here. So the first project that I want to discuss is Eat Well. Okay. So uh, this project it discusses about sharing the nutritional information using low cost technology uh, in the social context in the in the, in the neighborhood. Okay. So they de they developed a technology uh, using cheap mobile phones to where they can share uh, what they eat, how they eat, and the nutritional aspects of it among the community. So they took, um, they did not take an individualistic point. They took, uh, they thought that the community can help us uh, to uh, make a healthier living style. Okay. Another approach of such kind is crowdsourcing. Um, this image belongs to that paper. So in that project, they developed uh, a platform where people can upload the photos of their meals. So they, up, they take a photo using their phones and upload it into the site where the other users can rate that meal. Okay. So based on uh, the proportions of that meal, that is fruit, uh, fruit, uh, bread, milk, and meat, etc. Okay. And the middle one, it shows the ideal uh, proportion that should be there. Okay. So based on the user ratings, uh, they would try to create a awareness around the nutritional aspects of our meal time. Uh, Kana et al. they took a different approach uh, and developed a platform where people can, sh uh, using that platform, the neighbors, they can share their ingredients and come to a place and cook together. So they can use this platform to plan and bring their ingredients uh, and have a meal together with their neighbors. Another approach that we uh, often call the celebratory approaches. So that did not discuss on the uh, problems associated with food but how we can enhance our, um, enhance our experience with food. Okay. So one notable uh, paper in this aspect is uh, by Grimes and Harper, the celebrated technologies that discusses different aspects of our food that from which we get our pleasure around it. Okay. There are many works of this kind too. Um, many of them focused on technological aspects too. For example, this one, uh, the telematic dinner party. So, they discuss about creating an environment uh, using communication technologies where distant family members can share their experience of having meals together. Okay. So using different, um, different ways, they try to create an environment where distant members can uh, communicate among themselves while they eat. So um, two more papers are, um, with this approach are Family Cookbook by Hillary and uh, The Living Cookbook. Okay. Um, the family cookbook, it focuses on the shared artifact of a physical cookbook that we have in our family. So how, our in, how we interact with the, this, uh, this physical uh, book in the family, how our family history is embedded in the use of it and the sharing of it is discussed there. Living cookbook, it took a different approach uh, where they tried to augment the physical family cookbook with uh, digital technologies and uh, try to encapture the, if say for example, using photos and videos of our uh, cooking process. Okay. So for example, um, they do not only share the recipe of the food, but also the process, the actual process of using videos of uh, how we are using that recipe while we cook. Okay. And creates a digital artifact called living cookbook that can be shared among family members. So all these, works, they did not focus on solving uh, different issues with our family meals, but how to enhance the aesthetic aspects of our family meals, 
how we enjoy with our uh, with ourselves, our distant family members, and others. Uh, now let's come to the communication technologies um, around family meal times. There are some more projects around it that I can discuss in here. So project EAT or Eating Among Teens, um, it's a long study for that run for about 10 years among the American teenagers. So they discussed in this study about uh, the eating behaviors of American teens. And at one part of the paper, they discussed about the use of technology during mealtime, especially television, actually only television. So uh, this paper, I would say, say that uh, took a, uh, the first approach, not the celebratory approach, that problem solving approach. So it discussed, uh, especially with health perspectives of how the use of television um, relates with different behavioral questions, dif behavioral approaches with the teens. How they, say for example, especially with um, nutritional aspects like childhood obesity. So how the use of television is related with obesity and others. Uh, four photos by Kenton, O'Hara, et al., uh, and others. Okay, so uh, they discussed about the, a, a technology that they developed, and with the lens of using that technology, they uh, discussed different aspects of family meal times. Of how we, sh uh, this is actually a photo display. So how the photo display can be used to evoke conversation, uh, different memories around the photos, etc., in our mealtime context. Sharing life, uh, this paper they discussed about uh, many things, many innovative ways of using um, video sharing technologies like Skype uh, among distant family members. So they also discussed about how we can use this technology to share our meals with distant members. Codine, they focused on not only using video technology but a lot of other technologies to augment our dining table. For example, um, smart. Uh, what do you say? Smart tables are, and smart artifacts in the table that can create this experience. Okay. Um, a few more papers that are relevant to my work is um, unremarkable computing, but told me that did not discuss about meal times, but general use of technology in our home. So their main focus is uh, how we use the technologies around us, and by doing so we uh, enable the technologies to become unremarkable. So they mainly focused on how the technologies becomes, can become remarkable or noticed or unremarkable, how they blend into our everyday lives and so in such a way that we do not really notice the use of it. Okay? So this will be very relevant to us that, and I will discuss about its implication in our work later. Um, Barkas et al, they discussed about how the television viewing practices has changed over the time uh, with the advent of new um, personal video recording devices, etc. So one part of them also discussed about this one, unremarkable computing, that uh, how the television blends into our environment and how often we forget that we are watching it or we are not watching it, in fact. We'll discuss about these papers later with relation to our work. Okay. So uh, as the use of technology is growing in our everyday life and we're really focusing on the mealtime environments. So it becomes very important to us, these two papers, that uh, how the technologies we use do not obstruct our experience with food. Okay? So as, we, as I said before, it's not about food, it's not about technology, it's about the social relationship enabled through the, enabled during our mealtime. Okay? So uh, we do not expect that our technology is there in our mealtime and we are looking at the technology by and forgetting the meal or the social context that is that has arose around it. Okay? So uh, I'll discuss the implications of these papers in our work too. So from all these papers and others that I have studied uh, throughout the last one year, so the study I have designed here to, uh, is to address these following these research questions. Let's discuss one by one, and uh, I will share some of the results that we have got here. First of all, uh, we'd like to really see what are the communication technologies generally used during family mealtime. Meal okay. So there has been a lot of work about augmenting the technology space in this context, but really there is, uh, I did not, we did not find any uh, work that uh, explores the real practice in it. 
So in current society, in, in our current state, what other communication technologies are there present during the meal times and we use them? So this is an important research question that we would like to address. Most of the wor other works really discussed about television only, but as the uh, mobile devices are gaining popularity uh, and becoming ubiquitous, so what are the, their impacts in our meal times that we want to investigate? Another important context of our study is how the technology is placed in our meal time. Okay. So uh, what are the devices that we have surrounding our, our dining table when we have it and how they interact with one another. Okay. So there is um, another work uh, by Huffield that, that I did not discuss before that discusses about the placement of artifacts around our dining table, okay, laying the table for SCI in CHI 2012. So they discussed how our dining table is organized and the different physical artifacts that we have around this dining table. But they did not focus on the technologies present in there. We would like to address this research gap in our work. Then uh, sharing. So family meals is a shared experience. It is not an individual experience. So uh, also I, we believe that the technology that is in there needs to be shared. Okay? So how we share the, this technology is uh, the research question that we would like to address in our work. What makes the use of such technologies unremarkable or the opposite? Not all technologies can be unremarkable or will be unremarkable. So we would like to find the aspects of technology that enables this unremarkableness or the remarkableness in our work. Also, we would like to really investigate the, is there any relationship or difference between our ordinary dinners and say some parties that we have our home or some special occasions in our family. So how the role of technology is differentiated among the uh, ordinary mealtime context and the special occasions is of our interest. Okay. Now I uh, will discuss about the study that we have designed and then present the findings of it. So uh, our study, it uh, consisted of two interviews and two video recordings of the families. Okay. So we are not interested about individual meal times or meal times uh, that we do not consider uh, happen in the family context. So uh, with our participants, we took the interview, we took the first interview or, and the second interview uh, with the adult members of the family only. So uh, the first interview happened uh, at the f at the home of the of our participants at the suitable time, uh, where we discussed about their current mealtime practices, the use of technology, etc., around the home. Also, the, which technologies they have in their home, which of them they use or restrict uh, during the mealtime. Is there any family norms or rules around it, etc.? Then we uh, gave them two video cameras uh, and discussed about where to place them, the, the video cameras, and showed them the operations of them. Uh, we we are not we do, will not be present during the recordings. They will record their family mealtimes. Um, we also took some photographs of the family dining space so that we can uh, understand the placement of technology during meal times. So after we analyze the first interview, the photos and the videos, uh, we meet with the participants for our second interview and discuss uh, with the videos. We showed them different snippets of the videos of and ask them what is really going on there. Okay. So, so the things that arose from the videos we discussed with our participants and uh, verified our concerns. Uh, we uh, had aimed to recruit uh, six participants for this study, six families for this study. So up to today, uh, we have completed the study with family one, uh, family two and three. We have done the first interview and the video recordings. We are now analyzing those interviews and recordings and we will meet them in uh, this week or next week. Uh, with family four, it is recruited but it's not, uh, the study has not started with them yet. We aim to recruit two more families and uh, do the, complete the study. Okay. So among these uh, three families that we have seen, so these are the technologies, sorry. So these are the technologies that is present in their dining space. Okay. So let's discuss one by one. So family one, they have television that runs uh, all time during the meal time, also for family two. Uh, family one, they uh, often use phone for music, not for communication, uh, for calling or text. And they have Apple TV uh, fixed with their television. Family two is also same, but a main difference is that they uh, 
often use their phones or tablets for viewing or browsing um, different information. So mobile phones are not generally used for call or SMS purposes, uh, but they are allowed to. For example, they bring their phones to their dining table. They do not make calls or SMS, but if there is a call or SMS, they usually take it. They do not deny the call or SMS during mealtime. Uh, okay, they also have desktops, uh, and this is a special technology, smart light, that can be controlled using uh, their smartphones. So to create um, to create a special environment, a party environment. Okay, so this column it focuses on the technology that is generally used. This column uh, lists the technologies that they seldom use in their dining time. Okay, uh, so we can generally see that the television is of course the most common example found during our meal times, but there are other devices that is there that we need to discuss. So, as we have seen, there are many, many devices present, or occasionally used during the meal time. So, what about the interaction between these devices? Okay. Okay. So, there are devices of same sort, of same type across different platforms. So, there is an example from the interviews that is there. Um, so, where the second participant said that uh, he does not use his mobile phone with the television, but uh, the, wife, the, the mother she does use her phone with the television to play music, etc. Because he is not comfortable or with technology and he even does not know if that can be shared. His uh, Android phone can be shared uh, with the television. Okay. And his wife replied that especially when you are asking your wife to do that, who hates Samsung with love, and, but I do not even think that a Samsung would talk to an Apple. So the concern here is that they both are using smartphones of different platforms, iOS and, uh, and Android. So the question is, if the television that is plugged with uh, uh, Apple TV, so would that support that communication with another Android device? Okay. So uh, we'd really like to investigate how these uh, different technologies of the same platform uh, interacts with each other and or can interact with each other. There is problems with uh, technologies of the same platform, but in different versions. Okay? For example, this family, they have many iOS devices, but not all of them are the latest ones. Some of them are the old iPhones, for example. So these old iPhones, though in the same platform, they do not have the updated software, or can, be up, can have the updated software to communicate with the Apple TV that we are talking about. Okay? So there are also problems around that. Also, there is interaction between multiple technologies. So often the television is used uh, in uh, associated with the DVD player or the laptop or the sound system, etc. So managing these multiple devices in the mealtime context uh, can be a big problem. Okay. Then we focused on the spatial arrangement of those technologies. So how these technologies are placed. Uh, in the mealtime context. So I would present the data for our three families here. So you can see the family one, it has the television in here, the cooking space in here, and the family members, they have their meal in here. That's the dining bench. So the mother, she uh, she's, uh, usually sits in here so that she can reach all her physical artifacts required for eating. Okay? So the shelves and the cooking spots, they are around here. Uh, her children and her husband, they sit in here. So she keeps the mobile phone, her mobile phone in there, and the husband, she, he keeps her, his mobile phone in his pocket. Uh, and the other appliances, like the remote controls of television and Apple TV, they are in there. So you can already see that these technologies that she needs during her dinner time is within the reach, within the reach of her hands. Okay? So this, uh, we really need to investigate how this space plays a role in our interaction with technology in here. Okay. The television and the Apple TV, they, they are in here. Okay. All under control. <laughs> All under control, yes. Also, if you look, uh, so from this figure, we can really see that we ar arrange our technology in such a way that we can access them readily. There is no interruption in our accessing the data. 
but there is another aspect of this figure if you can see we also arrange ourselves around the technology so that we can use it not the technology but also ourselves here for example there is this fixed sitting order in here okay so the youngest child sits in here the elder one sits in here and uh, the husband sits in here okay so why this arrangement is made you can correctly guess that this is because of their heights okay so they has mentioned that they have sit in they have tried sitting in different orders but in that case not all the family members can really see the television okay so not only we arrange the technologies around the space but we also arrange ourselves around the technology so that the view is unobstructed so if we focus into family 2 here so this is actually a picture of three rooms made into one place here so there is a big hallway between these two two places uh, these two rooms probably are connected without any doors so this is the lounge where they have the television and the couch where sometimes they eat but their regular dining spot is here okay, they st uh, usually start their din family dinners in this dining table okay so between these two rooms there is a big sliding door that can be opened and that remains open during the meal times so they keep their television on during the meal time and they sit in this order and they can watch the television okay so here also the seating arrangement is the children sits in here and the parents their parents uh, sit in here okay so all three of them uh, can see the see the television there are also two chairs in here here and here but they mentioned that these chairs are never used because they cannot see the television from those chairs okay okay so uh, this family they use their phones and uh, smartphones and tablets during the meal times so usually those devices uh, they say remain on their laps or in their hand during, while they eat okay. so one might think that this this uh, use of personal devices may hamper the family communications during meal times but that is not actually the case for this family that i will discuss later okay so their meals start in here but that does not finish it in here always okay because the child she uh, keeps eating or does not want to keep eating so sometimes and often that happens they say it. so the meal starts from here and ends in here so this is a dining bench in the kitchen okay so she can bring her dishes to here sit here and watch the small television that's in there that is uh, she often watches her uh, preferred programs for example some uh, animation movies while she finishes her dinner the child okay so uh, i will also like to discuss this uh, experience of satiety with the application of television or other technologies during meal time the third family that we have studied uh, here this is only husband and wife so uh, they have a big dining table in here okay um, a couch in here the kitchen bench in here where they place the land phone which is seldom used they have their television dvd player and sound system in here okay so before the meal begins uh, usually uh, the wife she is busy with her cooking appliances and the husband sits in here working with his laptop okay so when the meal is ready so they just uh, put the laptop in the standby mode place it here okay and comes to here okay and then uh, so you can see that the orientation is not similar with the previous cases so uh, she can watch the television directly but he cannot watch the television directly right okay. but uh, they usually use television during meal times and it runs in the background usually some news or other so when uh, something interesting comes up in the television in the news for example so he can have a quick look at the television by bending his back or moving the chair and have a look when they watch some program together or watch a movie for example so usually they take their dinner to the couch and watch the television while they eat okay. so we are really interested to investigate more on how the space plays a role both with the technology and ourselves in our family meantime okay then let's uh, focus on another topic of how we balance the use of technology and the commensality the shared experience of eating okay there is 
some trade off of course. And uh, the families they varies among uh, about their norms of using technology. Say we, we have seen that family two they can use their personal devices, but in case of family one they are forbidden to use the personal devices. They actually have a family norm of not using phones or other personal devices during their meal times. Okay. But there are often arri arises some conflicts, how they manage those conflicts of interests. For example, let us discuss about family one here. So, they have multiple televisions in the family, in the, in the house and not all of them watch the same, like the same program. For example, when the, uh, when the, uh, their meal time begins, before that meal time, so usually uh, the children and the wife, she was, they want to watch some reality TV programs, especially we mentioned about Master Shave during that time. But the husband, he wants to see some other program like sports or news. Okay? So before the meal begins, so they watch in two different rooms. In the lounge, they have the sport. In the kitchen, television, they have the reality show running. Okay? But when the family meals begin, they all come together in the kitchen and uh, eat together. They do not want to eat in two different places. right? Okay. But the television in the lounge that was running in that time is not kept off. It is kept on with a low volume or it is muted. But the television keeps running in there. So, what we saw in our videos is that, uh, so the husband he was watching some sport in the lounge in this direction, but now he, in the meantime he is in here and watching this television, okay? because he does not want to uh, exclude himself from the family meantime. They really enjoy this family experience of eating together, but sometimes we have seen that his, uh, his uh, having a quick look at the television of what is going on with the sport or the news, what is interesting in there. So, it is not that he is avoiding the family, exp family experience of sh having together, but he is managing it in his own way of not missing his own program and also not the meal. There can be other conf conflicts of interest, say in our family too, we had that there was a scenario where uh, the parents they wanted to see the television, whereas uh, their daughter, she wanted to watch something in her iPad. Okay? So, they both were in the lounge having their meals and having their own devices. Now, the problem arose with the sound. So, how you can, you can have, uh, you can really watch your uh, preferred uh, animation movie in your iPad while there is a television running on there. So, both of them tried to maximize the volume as much as possible and there was really a tug of war as they mentioned between these two devices. So, how we, so, but then she, she, they also mentioned that they did not want to use the headphone. So, a quick solution would be using a headphone with the iPad because they thought that using a headphone during a family dinner is not good. It will isolate a, a, a person from the family context. Okay? So, how, do, how we balance these multiple devices during our meal time is of interest to us. So, what about, what about the role that technology plays during our ordinary or regular meal times and our celebratory meal times, for example, when we have a party or a special occasion in the family. Okay. So, uh, our initial experience uh, or uh, the pilot studies that we have run gave us an idea that people will probably not use technology during their special occasions. Special occasions either is about family, so they probably we, get, we had a hypothesis that they probably will not be using technology and confine themselves in the family environment only, okay? which was not the case that we have found among our participants. Okay? But they, but rather than excluding the technology, they use the technology in special ways for special dinners. Okay? For example, here the family three, they regularly watch television during meal time, the common programs that are running in the um, in the television channels. Okay? But when there is spe special occasion like for example, they mentioned about their first anniversary. So, there they did not exclude the technology, but they used the technology with a special way. They, wa they selected a special movie to watch together and watched it during their anniversary, first anniversary dinner. Okay? So, we can see the difference between the ordinary TV programs running uh, from free TV channels and a special movie that we have chosen together to enjoy our first anniversary. Okay. So, 
our observation it says that we do not exclude technology for special occasions rather we design that technology we uh, design our experience with the technology exclusively for that occasion to enjoy it. There was other examples too. For example, the family too they had some smart lights in their home that they do not use regularly, but when they are having some friends together or a special occasion in their family, they use the smartphones to create a party environment using those those lights. Okay. So they are using television as they are using technology in a special way for special occasions. Okay. So what about some regular occasions? So here the family one uh, they said that they do not use personal uh, technology in their meal times or they do not eat separately during their family meals. Okay. When they are together in the family they eat together. Okay. But if they are having a quick lunch for example a pizza okay, they can use their own televisions the, they can use they can eat separately in different uh, watching different television programs. Okay. Uh, this is actually some data that we will not include in our paper but I would like to share with you uh, it is about our pre-study data. So this person he mentioned that while he eats junk food for example some pre, uh, some ready made food from KFC or some other place. So he, he, he just uh, randomly watches the TV not a specific program that he wa wants to watch but a random program. Okay. So as uh, Bart has put in the other way junk food for junk technology or <laughs> the, in the reverse way. way. Okay. So we can see that technology can be used in different ways even the same technology can be used in different ways to support the mundane our ordinary dinners and the special family meal times. Okay. Now comes uh, the context of unremarkable technology that I have mentioned before. Okay. So from our uh, data from our the from the video that we have got uh, I will share some experience with you say the family one. So they had the television running in the kitchen for all the time before the meals during the meals after the meals. Okay. But they are not watching the television all the time. Okay. The television is running the family members are there they are looking at the program for example before the meals the wife she is cooking and occasionally looking at the program but she is also doing her own work. Okay. She is not constantly watching the television as if sometimes even forgetting the presence of the television. Okay. But the television was running there in a considerable volume how one can forget the very presence of it or even when they are eating their meals they were they were watching master chef in that occasion. So sometimes all the family members looking on the television uh, they are discussing about the program they are commenting about the judge in that program or the participants in that program sometimes they are discussing with other aspects of their life they are discussing what they are going to do tomorrow or they are even making little jokes of one another okay, forgetting the television. But the television is running on the same volume for the whole meal time. Okay. So this is an interest of how this technology becomes the foreground and the background. Sometimes everyone is watching them the technology comes to the foreground and the other times they are discussing among themselves the technology becomes the background. Okay. So we want to investigate why and how this feature is achieved. Uh, okay. So uh, we are not sure yet we are, we are not uh, still investigating on that aspect but considering this that a television is a uh, technology so it has it uh, we can we use it uh, using our uh, two sensory devices like uh, we watch it and we also can hear it. Okay. So they mention that when uh, they are not watching the television they still can hear it right. So, uh, when there is the excitement in the commentary of the television say in the voice of the judge or the participants. So they can qu have a quick look to see what is going on there. Okay. So in that way this technology can uh, become in the, the this technology can come to the foreground or go to the background. Okay. So our question in here is that what are the roles that these te devices have that enables this property and can we design other technologies in this way so that it can become remarkable or unremarkable. Okay. So here is another example of technology that became remarkable and that is why the family once said it is forbidden in their family context. So when we asked about why you do not think that 
uh, you can use f personal phones. They do not, why they do not allow personal phones during their family meal times? So they mentioned this, that when someone is on a uh, page of social media, say using Facebook or Instagram here, so they are not participating in the family discussion and that's why they decide it's not allowed in there. And they actually say that, say in their family meal times, they are watching television, but they are not unaware of the, they, are not, they have not forgotten the family context at that meal time. But when they are on their personal devices, they cannot pay attention to each other. And the father said, you got to yell, girls. So even by calling their names, their girls, they do not respond. That they have been asked something or made a comment about. They really literally has to shout to draw their attention. Okay? So this is one of our interests of how the attention is managed during the meal times, what technologies enable this property and what does not. Okay. Now let's discuss about how the technologies, they support our mealtime conversations. We are not actually watching the technology, watch, using the technology, but using it in a way to support our conversations also. It's not only for entertainment, but it's also for information. So I'll discuss about two uh, cases where this has arisen. So about the family one, I mentioned that they uh, do not allow to use personal technology. They do not prefer to call or text during their meal times. But there was one occasion in their meal time in their videos, we have seen that they were having a chat among themselves. Then the mother quickly take her phone, send a quick text and put it down. Okay. So when we asked them about it in the second interview, why she used her phone during the meal time. So she said that, so they were discussing about their next day routine. Her girl mentioned that, uh, her child mentioned that some of his of her friends will pick her up from the home next morning. So the mother was not aware of that, and she thought that she can send a text very quickly to his to the other parent and confirm this. Okay. So that use of technology arose from the context of the conversation. Okay. Otherwise, they probably will not have used that technology, right? Okay. And this is very important because family meal time is one of the few occasions in our everyday life that all the family members share together. So it's a general norm to have all the members in there so that they can discuss their future plans or what's happened around them. Okay? So this context is important for us. Uh, family two, uh, when, we, when we talked about uh, for what purpose they use their smartphones during mealtimes, they allow, remember that they frequently use smartphones during mealtimes. So one of the uses she mentioned is quickly checking an information. For example, when they were discussing about a, a newly opened restaurant, okay, so they can quickly check in a user forum of the, about the rating of the restaurant, why the restaurant is famous or what other people have said. Okay? So that use of technology arose from the context of the discussion. Okay? So Sam, was that photo one of your participants? No. Is that a stock photo? Uh, no, it's uh, from this from other uh, link, from, from a web link. Okay. Um, it also works in the opposite direction, right? So here we have discussed about how the use of technology arose from the context of the conversation. We also have seen the opposite, where technology has provided the context of the conversation. For example, here, the first family, in the first, in one of the videos of the first family, they all were laughing about something. So what, when we discussed about what they were discussing, so they were actually, re they were actually referring uh, to a scene in the, in the television where a person was running after a car. So in that particular scene, a person was running after a car. And that's why they were laughing because, so sometimes she, she said that their youngest child, she runs after the car, just a family game, so the car is running in slow motion and the child runs after the car. So they could relate their family event with that scene in the television, okay? And they all laughed about it, okay? Family two, they also mentioned about it. So when they use their uh, personal devices during mealtimes, they also share the content of it. So someone's, uh, that someone sees uh, interesting content in her phone, that uh, he or she shares with other members in the table. So look, this is an interesting thing. Okay? So in this way, the technology also provides a context of conversation during their mealtimes. Okay? 
So we have seen that it, it plays the both, uh, in, it plays a role in both direction. It also provides a context and it works in that context of memory mill mil time. Okay, I have uh, reached almost the end of this presentation. So uh, we will discuss what happens at the end of the mill time too. Okay, so there is, is a relationship, especially uh, for example in these two cases. Uh, say in family one, in the videos we have seen that they have finished their main meals, yet all the members are there in the table and eating casually. Okay, so at the end of the meal, when they have all finished their dishes, still they are not leaving the table, but they are they remain in the table casually picking a nut or something and eating. Okay? When we, we ask them why because they replied that because the program is not finished. So the family they were watching Master Shave, it was the same final if I believe. So they were still there because the program is not finished and their meal is not officially finished until the program finishes. Right? So there is a relationship in them. So in the second case it happens in a bit different way where the mother uh, uses technology so that her child is eating, keeps, her child keeps what eat, eating. And uh, she said that she's, the child is so engrossed in technology, she can sh shovel a whole plate of food into her plate and even uh, the child doesn't notice. Okay? So whether this is good or bad, we are not going to discuss, but it happens there. Okay? And we need, really need to understand what the role technology plays in this context. So uh, this is the data that we have identified thus far. Now let's discuss um, and what are our future works. So we are currently analyzing this data and uh, identifying the findings and also the implications for our current technology and our future technology that we are going to develop. So we are discussing uh, in three dimensions here, the uses of technology, of uh, what we use, what we don't use and how we use, okay. The ecology of the devices, where they are placed, what is the interaction between these devices that we have discussed, and also the technology plays, also how technology plays a different role for our different meals, for example, in breakfast, lunch, dinner, weekdays, weekends, and also in um, normal dinner versus uh, celebratory meal times. Okay. So from this, uh, after this first stage of research is finished, uh, we hope to explore this more in my PhD, PhD studies, the second stage of research that we are not sure yet, but possibly will focus on this unremarkable technology part and also the supportive, supporting the conversation in family meal times. So how uh, we can make technology that becomes unremarkable and uh, I would like to develop something or do a field experiment with that and how we can develop technologies that support our family conversation and also developing our uh, field experiment with that. Okay, so we are not sure of this at this now, but possibly in this direction or some other directions. Okay, okay so that's uh, for today. Any question? Pardon me. Sure. Uh, this is only f a few of them, not all of them. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> one thing you didn't mention is culture, if you mention the notion of culture, and I, I would, there'd be quite a, there might be a big relationship between the way people have meal time, so you know they're eating. So do you have any thoughts on that? Okay, so when we designed this study, uh, we really discussed about this, so what will be the cultural implications in this study? Okay. So I don't think that this falls into, the, into our scope and I really think that uh, making uh, any judgment on any uh, evaluating the cultural implications of using technology is not the goal of this study. But th this is really an interesting question that how uh, technology plays a role in meal time for different cultures. And we are, I can, for example, uh, at the beginning of the study we, from the, our pre preliminary data we thought that uh, not all families use technology, right? So in some families, it's strictly forbidden to use technology during mealtime, any sort of technology, for example, even television, mm -hmm. okay? So that's why uh, we wanted to avoid that case. For example, when we uh, recruited our participants, we explicitly asked for participants that use some sort of technology. So in our advertisement, we mentioned about families that use some, for, for example, we mentioned, for example, television, phones, etc. 
during their meal times. So we do, we do not aim to uh, address this issue, and I'm not sure uh, if anyone else has done that too. It is mentioned in some of the prior work, some of the prior, uh, prior works, but not in big length, not in great length. Um, sure. I mean, probably that's very wise not to. But I mean, I, but and listening, also, listening yeah. to it, I can't help but think of what a lot of people think, which is the sort of the English-speaking world and, and America, particularly the fast food and, and the disruption of. Um, family rituals and mealtimes around course. technology is a long time coming, isn't it? And it's, now yes. we're that and sort of this is, we're on that same train, basically. Yeah. And, and you could, some people might want to draw a comparison between that modern world and then um, other cultures. Is, di Europe, is, 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 dif is different. France, France sure. in particular, yeah. based on mine, it, you do a different approach, I think. Of course. But I, I, as, I, as I mentioned, I did not think that we could manage this study at this level. A cross-cultural study of meal times. That that sure, that will be that, that, the study, yeah. if you, that that will be really see, interesting. I believe. Theme of commentary. Yeah. 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 So, for example, here the first paper that I mentioned here, uh, they did a cross-cultural study in there. So they actually focused on the kitchen. So how the uh, our family interactions around the kitchen varies across different cultures. So mm -hmm. they did it in, in different countries in Asia, in Europe, in US, mm -hmm. okay, and compared the results. So this is one of the very few studies that I find in that context. Mm -hmm. Can I ask, I'm, uh, I'm look, it seems that your focus is on dinner times. Are you looking at other meal times as well? And the only reason I ask is because I'm looking at family, or I have been looking at family uh, interactions and togetherness around technology, not specifically meal times. So I was around for breakfast and lunch as well. Um, and that I think maybe there'd be an interesting Comparison. I think it, the families that I studied ethnographically, I found yes. dinner time was very much a ritual time where they wanted to have no technology, or they would specifically have um, rituals around TV and burger nights or whatever. But breakfast was an interesting time because technology was more allowed because you couldn't find out what was going on in the world or the news or the quick confirmations of. Um, so and so is picking up so and so, and this is happening and that's happening. So it, it's slightly different dynamics. So I'm just curious whether you were looking at, or even lunch time, or the fact that uh, yeah, other meals apart from dinner time. Yes, you are right. Other meals are different than dinner time, yeah, really. So uh, at the beginning of the study, when we discussed together, so we thought that if we run our study uh, for this in this dim dimension, uh, how to differentiate between breakfast, lunch, and dinner times, okay? But rather than we uh, decided to keep it simple to uh, family meal times only. So when we uh, interviewed our participants, we discussed this with them. So what are their practices around breakfast, lunch, <coughs> and dinner time? Okay. So what all three participants of us say that dinner time is the only time they eat together regularly. Okay. So breakfast is usually uh, a quick meal that everyone grabs in his way to his office or school. So they do not have a shared meal for the breakfast. And also for lunch, they usually eat in their working place or at the school. So uh, it's not actually a family meal time, it's an individual meal time. Right? So in this study, we really focused on family experience of eating. So we uh, restricted our study to dinner time only. Yes. And also, uh, th uh, there is another paper uh, by Huffield laying the table for SCI that I mentioned before. So that also discussed about uh, the differentiation between breakfast and dinner that you mentioned. So uh, as you mentioned, yes, they also say that uh, while in dinner time, the technology is more or less restricted, but in breakfast, it is encouraged be because of efficiency that it provides. So many people, yes, they check their mails or schedule in the morning so that they can manage the rest of the day. Yes, you are right. But this is actually not a focus of this study. Just a quick one, um, with the remarkable technology and how you described it, that it's something that sometimes is sort of, it's in your perception, but you're not focusing on it, but then it can become your focus. Um, and uh, I've been reading a little bit about calm technology. Is that the same as uh, unremarkable ambient. computing? Ambient. So ambient ambient, ambient watching, yes. So, so similar things, different, different names. So the other paper, um, Baraka Settle, they mentioned it, it as uh, ambient watching, but uh, they specifically focus on television, so that's probably appropriate in there. 
but the first one told me they discussed about technology in general, so they gave it a name, unremarkable technology. Okay. I'm just wondering to what extent you uh, drove participants for their attitudes towards the use of technology in, in real time, and whether the, the potential future directions, particularly around support and conversation, came out of that. Okay. Um, let me address the second issue first. So we are not really sure about the second stage sure. yet. We are yeah. just at the middle of our first study. Yeah. So this is the two directions that has erosion from the that data that we already have. Okay, we will we'll keep analyzing the data and discuss it a bit later, separately within one month, but not now. Okay, uh, so we try to go as much as possible, but uh, in a typical study like this, you can understand that it's not possible to understand everything. For example, with only two interviews and two meal times, uh, so we eat meals every day, right? But we are recording only two meal times, so it's not possible to get every sort of data. But we are trying to probe as much as possible in this, uh, among the scope of this. Because there's a lot of guilt about screen time among families. And someone else, was it Joe Fish gave a talk here a few years ago? Was, he was talking to families and the different, I think there was more about social class in his, in his talk, that different, people will have different attitudes to how much TV they yes, they have to watch. They have. But it's like they're... Um, That's why we recruited participants that generally use technology during mealtime. So in that way, uh, they, I think, uh, they are not using everything. For example, Family 2 uses everything, but Family 1, they are restricted to television only. Okay? But what they are using, their attitude, their, uh, their attitude toward that, towards that uses is well defined, right? So we are, we are not, yeah, we are, we are not saying that it's good, it's bad. The family, they have defined their users themselves. So I believe they will keep open to it. They will remain open to it. But if you were there, you're also not in this presentation, present other findings where you say people, have, the families have some rules or some things, some rules how technologies are used, which technologies are appropriate yeah. in, some, in a certain context and also difference between parents and children and how they use Yes, technology. for example, in family one, the parents, they, they can have their phones with them during mealtime. They do not make calls, but they can have. But whereas for their child, they are restricted to have, even have their phones with them, right? They leave their phones, laptops, etc., in their own room before they come to the mealtime, before they come to the family kitchen. What they say and what they do can, can be different, yeah. but so far we have not seen differences between the videos uh, or the uh, interviews. How, how about the awareness uh, of the users? I would imagine that, that some families would like to see TV uh, without thinking about see, watching TV, but just doing it. I think I did not get your question. <laughs> so they, they, they watch TV a yeah, lot, but yeah. Are they aware of it? Are, are they, is it an, an active decision to watch TV or do they do it by reflex? That's a good question. Uh, so I don't think we can address this in this work because, say, uh, when we go to them with the second, for the second interview with the videos, we show them different snippets of their life. So at that point, they become aware, right? So you cannot ask someone without making them aware of it, <laughs> right? Has anyone sort of expressed surprise at how often they check their phone, or how much time they did actually spend watching TV? Are you able to ask them to guess before you do the interview? Yes, yes. Uh, say in one, one occasion with the family one, so I said that the husband is uh, not looking at the f television in the dining place, but uh, moving uh, his body a bit and looking at the other TV in the lounge. Okay? So uh, when we showed them the video, they were not, the other family members were not allowed, were not uh, really noticed that. But from the video, they can notice that, yes, they are doing it. <laughs> that happened, yeah. I don't know which MasterChef, I, because I eat too early for MasterChef. <laughs> is the time of the meal, is that 